In the last video, we created this hoverable button in Rive, and today we're going to get it implemented in Webflow so that it works on your website and is a clickable link just like this. Let's get started. Yo! All right, we've got our button set up in Rive, and if you remember last time, we created the idle state and the hover state so that we get this animation working. We're going to need to set up um, an additional state or two to get the link to work. So if we look over in this code sandbox example quickly, we're going to need to create a state called link out. And that's how code knows that it's ready to go to a URL. So in this example, you can see when I click on this, it's going to go the, uh, the URL doesn't actually load in code sandbox, but that's going to go to google.com in a real um, example. So we're going to get that set up in Rive so that we can make this a functional button. All right, so to do that, we're going to add a couple states to the state machine. So let me pause this here, and I'm going to add a timeline called link out. You can call it whatever you want. Um, this is just uh, an additional state. And really, this is all we need to do to make this work. We just need this to come to this state when we click, and we're going to need to set that listener up first. So uh, let's do that. We have our hover listener set up, and you might remember we used a rectangle for that. And the rectangle is basically a hit area, and that is inside the bottom button group. And if I hide the top button group again, it's actually just this you know, dark purple rectangle for the bottom button shape. Um, but it's always there, and it doesn't scale or move or anything, so that works really well for a hit area. I mentioned in the last video, hit area can be an invisible item as well, so you can remove the fill from it uh, and the stroke if you want to, and it'll still function as a hit area. So, but I want to use the, this rectangle again to set up a listener for pointer down. So if I click plus here to add a new one, I'm going to call it click. And we're also going to need to create a new input. So we had one for hover. We're going to create one for click as well. In this case, it's just going to be a trigger. Our hover was a Boolean, so you can kind of have it be true or false. Trigger just fires. Um, so we'll call this one click. We'll call it click input just to differentiate between those two. So on our click listener, we've already got rectangle one set as the target because we have it selected. If you ever need to change the target, click here and then choose a new target. We're going to leave it on rectangle one. And instead of pointer enter, we're going to change this to pointer down. And in this case, we're going to have click input go. And you can see it just says fire click input because it is a trigger type. So to get this to work, we're going to add a condition so that hover doesn't just automatically play through to the link out stage. Because um, you'll see when I start the state machine, it's going to go to idle. And when I do hover, you can see it, it looks like it skips hover and goes right to link out. And that's because if you don't give this any parameters, it's just going to kind of whip through all the states that you have. So you need to tell it, you know, how long to stay on each state or if there needs to be a condition to move to the next state. And in this case, we definitely want a condition. We want to make sure that this click input is triggered before it goes to the link out stage. And in fact, that's going to be the end of the chain because here is where your website is going to navigate to another page and this won't even be visible anymore. So we're going to add a condition. We're going to have uh, the click input uh, fired here. So let's uh, restart our state machine. We should be able to hover. And you can see, yeah, it, it's not uh, automatically proceeding the link out because we didn't fire the click trigger. Um, but if I do click here, you'll see that it did jump over to the link out phase, which is great. I, I did notice one other thing I wanted to fix on this. You might notice that if I Unhover at a certain point, you can see one of the birds is kind of peeking out uh, here. And even though I reset the position for each bird, um, I also changed the rotations quite a lot in the birds flying animation. And I think that is what is triggering this. So I'm going to go back to my idle and I'm just going to key the rotation for each of the birds. Yep, that's what I wanted to do. All right, so this file is actually ready to work. We just need this link out state to be able to call in the code here to be able to make the link work. We can also add one more step if you want a little animation set up to happen before your link. And that can just add a little bit of extra kind of fun to it. So in this one, you might notice there is a quick kind of scale down animation, and then it goes to the link. So to do that, I'm going to add one more timeline, and I'm going to call it free link. Now, this is not going to be an animation focused tutorial, so I will time lapse this part. 
Okay, with my animation set up, I'm gonna actually go ahead and shorten my artboard so that it doesn't play through the full second and then go to 25 frames. So I'm just gonna type in 25 and hit enter. It's gonna shorten this timeline so that it only goes to that many frames. And then I can just add that into my state machine. So I'm gonna have it go from hover to pre-link to link out. And in this case, I want the hover to pre-link to have the click condition. So I'm gonna re-add that one here. Click input is gonna be fired. And then for pre-link to link out, if I don't set any parameters here, it's not even gonna play this animation. It'll just kind of continue on through to the link out stage. So what I wanna do on this transition out is set the exit time to 100%. And that means it needs to play 100% of this animation before going to the next one. So let's preview this. Okay, hover works when I click, it plays the animation nice and quick, and then it goes to the link out. So it's not really gonna delay the user too much, um, but it's gonna add a little extra fun to the process. One other quick thing I might do here is shrink down this artboard a little bit. It's pretty big at this point. I'm gonna grab my art and move it up to the top left corner a little bit closer. And I need to leave some room because the birds do kind of fly out into here. So I need to leave that space. And then on the artboard itself, I'm gonna shrink this down. Actually, I think I, this worked well at 300 by 150. So then to check my animations to make sure they still fit, make a couple of adjustments, and then it's good to go. So from here, what I can do is, the really easy method is just to grab the share link, click generate link, and then grab the embed code. This is the easiest way to add Rive to a Webflow project. So if I add one here, I've got this page set up with a iframe ready to go. I can hit this, hit save and close. It's gonna show up right here. And this will even work when you go into the preview mode in Webflow. Uh, so the hover's gonna work, the click is gonna work, but it's not gonna actually go anywhere on click. So to get this working as a link, we're gonna need to use the JS runtime code. So I've got the code set up here in a code sandbox and I can kind of walk through what this does. One of the things you're gonna see is that first you need to create a canvas element. So that's here on the index. I got canvas with an ID. In this case, the ID is Twitter button. That's gonna be important to use in the JS code. I'm also setting the width and height here. So here then we're gonna add the button canvas. So we're gonna get it by element ID, Twitter button. So that you can see shows up here and here. I also need to host my .riv file. So if I go back into Rive and click download, uh, there will be an option for, for newest runtime. So you wanna click that and save your file somewhere that you can find. And then you need to up, uh, upload it somewhere that you can host it. I'm using upload care. That's because you can't upload the .riv file into Webflow right now. So make sure you add, you add your source. That's the URL for where you're hosting the button itself. Autoplay is true. And then there's a couple other things we need to know from the file itself. So you need to know the name of the state machine. State machine one is the default state machine name. When you create a Rive file, you get a state machine called state machine one. If you don't change that, uh, you can use state machine one here. If you do change it, make sure you update it here. We're also gonna need to know the name of this state. So this is gonna create um, an if statement that is gonna say, if the state is called link out, then you know, window location href equals Google. So that's where you're gonna set the link that you want your button to send you to. So that's why we had to set this link out parameter in the state machine itself. So that's why it's at the end of our chain of states because um, when it gets to that state, it's going to this URL. We also, in this case, I have it set up so that um, the cursor turns into a pointer when you hover over it and it goes back to the default style when uh, you are in the idle state. So that is really helpful for making this look like an actual button so that you know, this is gonna turn into the little finger icon when you hover over it and turn back to your pointer. If you don't add this part of the code, uh, that's not gonna work. It's just gonna look like a pointer, which I think could confuse your users. So that's what that does. And that is referencing the hover and idle states. And this works well because of the way I have this state machine set up here. So you'll notice um, idle is when it's not being hovered over and hover is when it is being hovered. And it's only gonna enter the hover state when 
the um, input is triggered, and the input is only triggered when the listener is uh, is used, which only happens inside this rectangle space. So it actually works really well as a kind of hit area for this trigger as well. So that is what that is going to do. So to get this all up and running, we're going to use this code inside of Webflow. What we're going to do is copy everything from here and place this in this HTML embed. Instead of this, we're going to paste this. First, we're going to write script tag, and this is where everything goes. And like I said, we need to have the canvas as well. So I'm going to add canvas and I need to make sure to give it the ID it has to be the same Twitter button and I'm going to set the width and height here. You also need to copy this script and place it in the head tag. You can come to riveflow.webflow.io and uh, just go ahead and copy the snippet from here and then you paste it into the head code either for the entire site or just for the page that you have your animation on. Okay, that should be what we need to get this working. So let's save and close. One thing about the using this JavaScript code is that you're going to have to actually publish it to get it to work. But I'm not ready to publish my site uh, quite yet, but when I'm using the same exact thing in this footer area. It's, this is set up as the functional button, so it's gonna actually link out as expected. So let's examine this code inside my footer. And you can see that it is the exact same thing, except here I'm using a slightly different ID. It is important to use a different ID with each canvas that you create, because if you have the same one, on the same page, uh, the, the two instances will conflict and they won't work. So just make sure you create a new unique ID here and uh, use it in your code. Um, the other thing that's important to create is a new variable here. So we're having, we have let button canvas and then we also have a new variable Twitter button. You have to make sure those are new for each instance um, that you create as well. So once you publish that, it's going to look and function exactly like this, which means you've got a linkable button on your site using Rive. Super fun, hope that's helpful, and please reach out and let me know if you have any questions. This is an example of the site I'm building, it's called Riveflow. It's all about getting Rive functioning in Webflow, so please feel free to visit riveflow.webflow.io to come and check it out. I will continue to add examples to it as we go, and uh, I have a couple of really good ones on here already, including this cool pointer tracking one that works with tracking the pointer all throughout the viewport and includes your hover states that you may have set up. I've got some instructions on how to do that. I've got the code, and this tutorial will be there as well. Hope that's helpful. Thank you. Yo!